Welcome back to Cartography and Geography Club. Today, we're setting sail for Haiti's architectural wonders and infrastructure adventures. Get ready to uncover more hidden gems than a pirate treasure map. From historical landmarks to the twists and turns of modern transportation, we'll navigate through it all. And hey, if we get lost along the way, we'll just claim we're exploring the uncharted territories. Plus, don't forget, you can even build your own map with us and submit it for this season's prize packs. So let's dive in and chart our course to learning. Haiti's architecture is a fascinating blend of cultural influences, reflecting its rich history and diverse heritage. The San Sushi Plaza Palace, located in the northern city of Nalo, is a remarkable example of French colonial architecture. Built in the 19th century by King Henry Christophe, it features grand columns, arched windows, and an imposing central dome in a neoclassical style, standing as a testament to Haiti's independence from France. The Citadel Lafriere, also enshrined as a World Heritage Site, is situated in the northern Mastiff de la Haute. Dating back to the early 19th century, it is a massive fortress built atop a mountain to defend Haiti against potential invasions. Its impressive stone walls and strategic location make it an iconic architectural marvel. Moving over to something a little smaller, Haiti's gingerbread houses are renowned for their unique design featuring ornate fretwork or latticework on their exteriors, often painted in vibrant colors reflecting both French colonial influence and local craftsmanship. The Haitian standard architecture emphasizes natural materials such as wood and clay, with traditional houses being typically rectangular, featuring pitched or gable roofs, and walls constructed using wooden planks or wattle and daub techniques, adorned with decorative patterns reflecting cultural heritage and symbolism. Haiti, Haiti showcased modern architectural expressions through various structures. One prominent example is the Marriott Port de Prince Hotel in the capital city, boasting contemporary design with clean lines and a refined aesthetic. Another notable site is the Center of Art, situated in Port de Prince, which not only serves as a cultural institution, but also stands as a testament to modern architectural sensibilities, providing space for artists to create and exhibit their work within its modern confines. Additionally, Sit Soleil Cultural Center, located in Sit Soleil neighborhood of Port-au-Prince, exemplifies modern Haitian architecture with its vibrant art exterior and innovative design elements. This center serves as a hub for community activities offering spaces for cultural and educational endeavors amidst its modern architectural backdrop. Now that we've covered the buildings, let's move over to transportation. Haiti's transportation network includes significant roads and bridges and is crucial for national connectivity. Pont Neuf, or New Bridge, is located in Port-au-Prince and serves as a vital connection point for different parts of the city facilitating the flow of traffic and commerce. Route National 1, a major highway, stretches for, from Port-au-Prince to Capitan in northern Haiti, cover, which covers approximately 215 kilometers or 134 miles. It acts as a crucial lifeline for transportation and commerce, linking major cities and towns along its route. The Trout Board de Mer Bridge situated in the Ebonite Department is a significant infrastructure project spanning the Ebonite River. It plays a vital role in connecting communities in either side of the river, thus facilitating transportation and economic activities in the region. Haiti's railroad system, though historically significant, has largely fallen into disuse and disrepair. The country once had an extensive network of railroads primarily used for transportation of agricultural products such as sugarcane and coffee to ports for export. However, due to a combination of factors including economic challenges, natural disasters, and political instability, much of the rail infrastructure has been abandoned or dismantled. Efforts to revive the railroad system have been sporadic 
and largely unsuccessful. In recent years, there have been discussions and plans for potential revitalization projects, but as of now, Haiti's railroads remain largely inactive. Haiti hosts a network of ports crucial to its trade and economy. Port-au-Prince, the capital city, houses the largest and busiest port in the country, serving as a pivotal point for both domestic and international trade. Capitan, situated in the north, acts as a vital gateway for trade in the region, handling various goods, particularly agricultural products. Port de Pex, located on the northwestern coast, is a smaller port mainly facilitating local and regional trade, including agricultural produce and seafood. Additionally, Jacmel, positioned on the southern coast, features a modest port contributing to trade and tourism in the area. Despite differences in size and capacity, each of these ports plays a crucial role in Haiti's commerce, connecting the country to global markets and supporting local industries. Toussaint Levert International Airport, located in Port-au-Prince, stands as the busiest airport in Haiti and serves as a hub for Sunrise Airways. It accommodates both international and domestic flights, boasting modern facilities capable of handling a significant volume of passengers and cargo. Capitan International Airport, situated in Capitan on the north coast of Haiti, holds historical significance as the former capital of the French colony of Saint-Domingue. This airport plays a crucial role in connecting northern Haiti with other regions, supporting international and domestic flights while contributing significantly to the region's tourism and commerce. Port de Pax Airport, located in the northwest department of Port de Pax, may be smaller compared to the first two airports. However, it serves as an essential regional hub catering to the transportation needs of Nordwest Department. The airport manages a mix of scheduled and chartered flights, thus contributing to the local economy. These airports serve as a vital gateway connecting Haiti with the rest of the world, facilitating economic growth and providing travel opportunities for both residents and visitors. Haiti is committed to enhancing its transportation infrastructure. With projects like the Haiti Resilient Connectivity and Urban Transport Accessibility Project, these initiatives backed by a $131 million grant by from the World Bank, aim to improve rural connectivity to the South Peninsula and bolster climate resilient urban mobility in Capitan. Additionally, the Haiti Strengthening Disaster Risk Management and Climate Resilient Project will enhance emergency response and evacuation capabilities in areas prone to climate risks. Transportation in Haiti faces a myriad of challenges and opportunities as outlined in recent news and reports. On the downside, the country's transportation infrastructure has been severely impacted by the natural disaster notably the 2010 earthquake and subsequent events, impeding access in response to disaster-prone areas. Political instability, exemplified by the assassination of President Jovenel Mosul in 2021 and ongoing civil unrest, has stymied governance, thereby affecting the development and upkeep of transportation systems. Additionally, Haiti's narrow export base and susceptibility to natural hazards have curtailed its ability to invest and sustain growth in the transportation sector. Despite these hurdles, there are promising prospects. Haiti has made strides in strengthening its disaster risk management capacity, including enhancing the resilience of its road network. Moreover, improved controls at customs and increased oil tax revenue have bolstered the country's fiscal position potentially aiding transportation infrastructure development. Furthermore, international support, such as the U.S. strategy to prevent conflict and promote stability, which includes a 10-year plan for Haiti, could offer avenues for enhancing safety and security, particularly in the transportation domain. The transportation sector in Haiti stands at a critical juncture, where strategic investments in international aid could significantly enhance the current state of affairs, while persistent challenges necessitate 
robust and resilient solutions. As we conclude our tour of Haiti's architecture, we're inspired by the nation's enduring spirit, cultural wealth, and unwavering pursuit of progress. I can't wait to dive into other aspects of the country next week for our next Haiti episode. Thank you for joining me today, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join our Patreon for bonus materia on all our subjects. Have a great week, and don't forget to never stop learning.